Hello and welcome to Kigali, Rwanda and the 2018 African Regional Conference. I'm joined now by Ulanga Martins, who's Chief Compliance Officer at Banco Bay in Angola. Ulanga, thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Yep. Now, you've just finished a panel, the last panel of, of this year's conference, looking at the impact of de-risking on Africa. Um, we heard a lot about the, the regional problems being faced from north to the south to east and west. And obviously, Angola has had a very difficult time when it comes to sort of the de-risking uh, phenomena. Um, so a couple of years ago, Angola started to lose many of its US dollar clearing relationships with some of the global correspondent banks. Um, Talk us through why that occurred and what the implications were for the market. Clearly, Angola was heavily affected by uh, the de-risking, especially USD corresponding banking relationships. Um, it has, I mean, a huge effect on the market as a whole since, uh, I mean, as you know, Angola is um, a major oil exporter. I mean, we continue to export oil in US dollars. And um, therefore, once you lose your corresponding banking in dollars, your ability to transact basically in US dollars. For the economy, central bank had to act and basically convert much of the flows from dollar to euro, in which the banks continue to have um, capacity to execute payments. But this has a cost. Basically, the central bank needs to buy dollars or to buy euros uh, and then sell them to uh, uh, the commercial banks via um, an auction system. Uh, so, um, I mean, the whole economy had to adjust to this new situation. We had, uh, uh, I mean, we used to um, base basically all the prices in USD. So it was a new reality, not just for the financial system, but also, I mean, for the economy in general. Um, and one of the main uh, results of it, it's basically an increase in costs, uh, real costs, some speculative maybe, but clearly, I mean, the result of that, that there was an increase in cost. And a financial system with a lot of restrictions to execute payments in um, US dollars. And for you, what were the factors that you think were driving or have driven some of the, the, uh, the global correspondent banks to sort of uh, cut ties with, with Angola? And, and have those uh, factors changed in, in, in the past year or yeah. so? Angola has, has always um, been, um, um, perceived as a high-risk jurisdiction. Um, with the uh, crisis in 2008, the prices of oil that came down, um, probably in the process of de-risking, um, Angola had all the characteristics to be put on the list, um, to the point that um, the decisions that were taken, they weren't bank per bank. It was a jurisdiction as a whole. Um, so this happened. At the time, Angola was on the list of FATF as countries under uh, surveillance, let's put it that way. Since then, we came out of that list. The central bank was very active putting uh, the proper regulations in place in terms of the FATF recommendations, in terms of the recommendations also from the US Treasury, in terms of complying with uh, FinCEN and uh, um, uh, what we perceived as being the main preoccupations from the uh, US um, uh, banks. And so I would say that today we have a different uh, scenario, um, but it takes time. It takes time, the economy is also rebounding now. The, um, the capacity slowly is coming back. It will, it will take time and uh, clearly we're not expecting to go back to a situation where we were before. I mean, today, as I um, explained during the panel, um, we're probably looking at a situation in which banks will deal with multiple corresponding banks, but much smaller, uh, in which they have the capacity and the ability to develop really trustworthy and um, uh, long-standing relationships so that they understand what are the risks involved, and from there, uh, start rebuilding the capacity to execute payments. Okay, and so, so then looking to the future, it's about that issue of capacity raising. And, and so um, will Angola and the authorities in Angola, as you mentioned, as a market-wide issue, have to work, um, as they have been doing recently, more closely with international partners to really get to that level of, of, sort of international standard yeah. that's required? Well, no, clearly, it's, I mean, it's, um, it's an industry issue. It's not a bank-to-bank -bank, um, issue. The regulators are doing their job. 
the, um, uh, the banks association is also uh, doing the same. Um, and the banks individually, they now they have a much bigger understanding of what's required. Um, and um, I mean, we believe that probably, I mean, slowly, we will be able to um, um, get out of, um, of this situation. But at the same time, also, with the, some of the actions that were taken by the central bank, I mean, today, even if all the banks regained their ability to execute payments in dollars, probably more than 50% of these payments will continue to be executed in other currencies. We're talking about Euro. Um, slowly, we see the renminbi being internationalized. We do a lot of trade with China, so it is normal that there's a good chunk of payments that will be executed in renminbi. It's the same, I mean, uh, Europe is a major partner of Angola uh, on trade, so clearly there's a lot of transactions that will be executed also in uh, euros. Uh, so the dollar will be for, I mean, the remaining, obviously the oil industry, it's basically um, everything is done in dollars. So this will remain, but apart from that, I would say that um, we will, I mean, the coming years, uh, we're not going to see the dominance of transactions in uh, dollars, we will see the coming of other currencies to complement, which will then also facilitate at the end of the day. Olenga, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.